And hello again, everyone. I'm John Ray on the Price and Value Journey. Today, we're going to talk about imposter syndrome. And I think that's an important topic for anyone who sells what's between their ears, (laughs) because what's between your ears and imposter syndrome can get mixed up in a big way, particularly if you're coming out of corporate, you've had this shelter of corporate, maybe uh, the branding and the assistance uh, that comes from corporate. And suddenly you're out in your own practice, trying to do all your own thing, comparing yourselves to everyone else out there that's doing what you're doing and wondering whether you're doing it right or whether you belong where you are. And we've got a fantastic guest to talk about this important subject. Uh, Stacy Ruth is the CEO of Unstoppable Leader. Stacy founded two multi-million dollar agencies. She's been among the top 50 entrepreneurs under 50 in Atlanta and twice awarded the top 100 IT agencies by Experiential Marketer. As a novice entrepreneur, Stacy made nearly every business decision mistake possible. Wow. And she learned how to make the necessary personal transformations in order to thrive. Even bigger wow. Um, Her businesses survived personal challenges, the fallout of 9-11, deep recessions, and her own health issues resulting from a battle with imposter syndrome. Today, she coaches other CEOs and executives on how to make faster and more accurate decisions using their personal wisdom. She's a passionate advocate for women leaders claiming their own seat at the table that they designed for themselves. She's got a new book out following her second, it's her second book following her first one. And her new book uh, is called Own Your Own Shift. And it's available on Amazon. And as we record this, uh, it'll be out in a few weeks on April the 19th, 2022. Stacey Ruth, it's a pleasure to have you on. Absolutely a pleasure to be here. I think you've got a really, really great group uh, of listeners who can really benefit from what we're talking about today. This well, it's going to be great. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm, I really appreciate you uh, being willing to share what you've got to share about your own journey. But um, talk about how you started your practice and just the background of your practice. What led you to go out on your own? Oh, that that's a that's a great one because um, I, I was actually in a corporate agency. We were the largest global production and event marketing agency in the world at one time, and uh, it was uh, I'll say it was pre focus on diversity and inclusion, <laughs> and it was very much a um, I'll say male lily white. Uh, type of environment, mm-hmm. very much like Mad Men, if uh, anyone watches that. Sure. And I was, I was very much um, uh, seduced, if you will, uh, by the uh, excitement and being a part of it. And it was also a sweatshop. And I was very exhausted and, and couldn't kind of keep up with the politics. We were buying a new company every, literally every week at the time. Mm-hmm. And so I, I chose to take the leap uh, out on my own. And it was still in an industry that was male dominated. And I don't know if you and your listeners are aware, but imposter syndrome is not just a, you know, up to the moment uh, term that people are using to describe self-doubt. It's actually uh, a diversity and inclusion issue. Mm -hmm. And it belongs to the people who are first only or different in an industry or in a business or mm-hmm. an organization. And I was a woman CEO of a you know fast growing agency in what was at the time a male dominated field. Mm-hmm. And I immediately started experiencing this sense. I was young and I was female that maybe I didn't have what it took. And so then I started trying to shore myself up and that's when things went a little bit sideways. Now, was this before you left to start your own, your own firm or, or was it during this uh, big firm experience that you had or both? Well, during the 
big firm, ex- well, both. Uh, yeah. The big firm experience kind of set me up to feel that I was down in power structure mm. as a young female. Mm-hmm. And I talk about that some um, in uh, my upcoming book is Inside Out Smart. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about biases and we're talking about assumptions and we're talking about how society shapes a lot of our beliefs about ourselves. And so it shaped a lot of my beliefs about what I was and was not capable of, even though I'm, you know, I'm a relatively gregarious and confident person. But in that context, I uh, experienced a sense of maybe I don't belong here and maybe they'll find out I don't know what I'm doing. Gotcha. And that just carried over into starting my own business. So how were you able to start your own business when you had imposter syndrome to begin with? That's that's great because the the idea behind being able to move forward is to be able to tap into our inner concept of ourselves, our inner wisdom. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of that is intuition. Some of that is our ability to connect to our own purpose, our own values. And I had enough of that to be able to take the risk, to take the leap. And mm. that's true of most entrepreneurs. And we have a, a growing entrepreneurial um, culture going on right now. But 84% of entrepreneurs self-identify with imposter syndrome. So it's not just women. It's not just underrepresented demographics. It's mm-hmm. not just black or brown or right. gay or, you know, it, it, whatever it is, what LGBTQ plus, you know, mm-hmm. it's, whatever it is, there, there are things that will lead us to believe that maybe we don't have what it takes. And someone somewhere is going to find out and will be outed. So talk about what happened with you as you built your, your mm-hmm. own firm. Mm-hmm. What, what, what was this, this, what was that journey like? What was going mm-hmm. on with the firm? And then what was going on with this arc of imposter syndrome for you? Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be really real with you because I was, my own worst nightmare boss Mm. when I started the agency. Mm. And so I did what a lot of individuals with imposter syndrome will do. And um, I do have, when we uh, talk a little bit about how people can contact me, I do have an imposter syndrome workbook where people can identify whether they have it, you know, there's some questions on there and then Mm -hmm. ways to deal with it. But I, I was micromanaging. So I was hovering over the folks that worked with me. I brought in additional executives uh, who were men, who were older than me, in order to shore up what I felt was lacking credibility. Uh, I also was uh, over delivering, over performing. So I was burning the candle at both ends. I was, you know, working around the clock, 80 hour work weeks, and it was never enough. Mm. It was never enough for me. And my employees could never do enough for me in that dynamic. So, so a lot of people who are solopreneurs can identify, and then they can also experience uh, what might be going on in their um, organizations if they have employees or, mm-hmm. or vendor partners and suppliers. Mm-hmm. And what wound up happening to me, I didn't realize what was going on. I just, you know, that was just what I thought I had to do. Uh, and what wound up happening to me, and I, I share this when I you know, speak on imposter syndrome, is there was a day when I found myself on the floor of the women's bathroom. My hair had been falling out. Um, I was having headaches 24-7, and now I was bleeding internally. Oh, my. And that's the level of pressure and stress that imposter syndrome puts on us. And I've heard other women leaders talk about similar kinds of health issues. Ariana Huffington talks about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I, I know there's a number of people that discuss it. Uh, so, so if we internalize it rather than recognizing it and dealing with it, it can actually do some serious damage 
to our physical well-being. Did you attribute at that time imposter syndrome to the physical uh, symptoms you were having, or did that take a time to make that connection? It took time to make that connection. And I will tell you, and one of the reasons that I'm so willing to share what I went through Mm -hmm. was I actually was reading what Arianna Huffington was going through. I was reading what other women with imposter syndrome were going through because I was following other women leaders, like, what are they doing? And, And so I was starting to hear these stories and I was like, oh, that, oh, that's what I, Oh, that's me. Mm. And and so it, it was this slow dawning by hearing other people share what they were going through and how they were dealing with it. And so it was it was you really didn't know imposter syndrome was to blame for any of this until you really identified it in others. Correct. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, I've certainly, you know, studied it, immersed myself in it sure. uh, so that I really can deal with it. And I think that I'm on a mission to share it with others, because given that I am a lifelong entrepreneur, given that I do believe that entrepreneurship is crucial as a foundation for our entire economic structure, and 84% of entrepreneurs are dealing with this, I think it's so important to get it out there and not let people just think, oh, well, I, I just doubt myself. Oh, no, there's there's more going on, and it's it's possible to overcome it. And it's not difficult once you recognize it. But it, what you're implying here, or you're not implying, you're saying flat, (laughs) you're, you're (laughs) saying it flat out. Thank you. Um, (laughs) is, is that you can go on and function, uh, normally I'm using air quotes, um, for years and suddenly hit a wall because that's what I think I hear you saying was some, something it captures your experience with imposter syndrome. Yes. And in fact, the more you achieve and the higher you go, I'll say the rarer the air where you are, <laughs> right. the, the more likely you are to experience imposter syndrome mm. in a new role, in an organization where there aren't any others like you at the level at which you've achieved. So that's that's what really starts to trigger it. First, only different and high achieving. So you found yourself on the bathroom floor. You had all these physical symptoms that were so um, powerful. What mm-hmm. what what happened? To you? How did you take care of yourself physically? Number one and no, number two. When did that connection come? When you know what? Did it take a while before you read about our? you know, uh, Miss Huffington and others that had this uh, same issue? Well, I think that uh, it tends to be when we start to realize something's wrong and we start looking around for what it could be, mm-hmm. that we start to see things that were right there in front of our face that we never saw before. And and that certainly was my experience. Now, I had already been through all of the physical tests and they couldn't find anything physically wrong with me with, you know, standard um, blood work and all of, you know, I even had a MRI, mm. um, but, uh, I did go get, uh, you know, therapy help, uh, with what was going on. Cause everyone pretty much settled on it was stress. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as, as we were getting into that conversation, I started to realize that it was really my concept of what was necessary and what I deserved that was not, uh, being met. And I was the only one who could meet it. Same and then, of course, I was seeing, you know, what other women were experiencing kind of in concert with that. Right, right. Say more about that. The the part about what you deserved. I mean, what, what, mm-hmm. was, what, what was your mindset there? Well, my mindset was classic um, for imposter syndrome. And and the definition of imposter syndrome is no matter what you've achieved, you tend to dismiss it as luck, knowing the right people, 
you know, it's something outside of your control. It has nothing to do with the fact that you actually worked really hard for it. You were really qualified for it. You really did the work, you did the footwork and you got yourself there. Mm -hmm. So, so I realized I was pushing away my own credibility and uh, handing over my success to outside situations, people that, they were supportive, but they didn't cause it. If that makes sense. Yeah. So what, what for you, what did the arc of recovery look like? Was it something Mm -hmm. that took a while? Was it something that you, you had on the other stream, a moment of, of pure insight where you saw the light from the heavens and you you (laughs) knew you were worthy or, I mean, talk about the, the arc of your recovery. Well, the arc of my recovery was starting to apply a lot of the tools and the tools are for the most part, excuse me, for the most part, they are self-awareness and mindset tools. Mm. So, you know, was I picking up the tools going, this will fix my imposter syndrome? No, not exactly. Mm -hmm. the, The first thing I was trying to do was get myself back in balance, right? Um, As I'm getting myself back in balance, what I'm doing is talking to other people about what I'm actually feeling inside. As imposters, we don't want to let others see how hard we're paddling just underneath the surface, right? And, you know, being able to have someone that I trusted who, you know, I I didn't feel like sharing with them was going to sabotage anything I was doing in my career um, was extremely powerful. So being able to share what you're going through is critical, gets it out of your head and allows you to get perspective. Another thing that's very important was being able to let go of some perfectionism and Mm. let go of some of that micromanaging control, which was part of the work. The other thing, and this may sound a little woo-woo to your audience, but it is probably one of the most powerful tools for dealing with imposter syndrome is to be able to shift our internal mantras. And um, one of the ones that imposters have, especially if they're starting their own business, is no one will pay that much for what I do. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> and you can shift that into an affirmation. And uh, my my agency initially was notoriously undercharging for our services. Mm-hmm. No one will pay that much for what we do. Mm. And when we flipped that and said, no, we, we are charging fair market value for very valuable services, right? So when you do an affirmation, your brain has to believe it's possible, right? Mm. So the, the way out there affirmations aren't as effective as simply saying, I provide a service that has real value Mm -hmm. and, and owning the value that you provide. So, so those are some of the things that just, it's, it's, uh, it's not a grand sweeping shift. It's, it's making those micro movements that continue to assert. I deserve it. I'm worth it. And, and I bring something of value through my experience. (laughs) Folks, we're here chatting with Stacy Ruth. She is the CEO of Unstoppable Leader. Um, I, I want to circle back around to just, I guess, the how I know I've got imposter syndrome. For you, it was more obvious than maybe it is for some others who maybe yeah. they don't have the physical symptoms. Maybe they d- haven't hit that wall yet. Right. But, but uh, how how do they know that they've got something that's serious that they better take care of? Well, I think one of the easiest ways to get our brain around the the symptoms um, are, and and this comes out of of the book, The Secret Thoughts of Professional Women Mm. by one of the uh, kind of forerunner researchers on imposter syndrome and women, which was discovered in the early 70s. And uh, so she defines five personality types. One of them is the superhero, and that's the person who's going to do it all 
and take on that one more thing. And people are like, oh my gosh, how do you get that all done? Okay. So if that resonates with you, you might have imposter syndrome. (laughs) Okay. Another one is the expert. That's the person who always has to have one more degree, one more credential, one more certification. Uh, they, they have all of this knowledge, but they can't quite get out of the gate. Mm. And, you know, a lot of coaches mm. deal with that, but right. not just coaches. Sure. A lot of folks feel that need. Mm-hmm. Um, another one is the, um, and I, I don't think she calls it this, but it's, it's the, the natural, ge- oh yeah, she does natural genius. Okay. Mm. Um, and the natural genius has always learned things really easily. and Things come easily to them, right? So, so they're smart, they're capable, and then they bump up against that one thing that it doesn't come as natural to them, and they don't really know how to learn something new because it's always been so easy for them. And so then they start to doubt themselves because why is this one hard, mm. right? Yeah. So that's another one. So if that resonates. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there are the perfectionist, the person who's always got to get it 100% right all the time or do nothing. So there's a fear of failure behind that. And that leads to a lot of procrastination, which can also be a hallmark of the uh, imposter syndrome. And I, I guess like for I'm those, one. well, for those folks, um, if and if they ever get it sent out or hit send or, or hit publish, whatever, then they're looking at all the errors in it that they should have caught, right? <laughs> it's it, what keeps a lot of people from writing that book. Mm-hmm. It keeps people from um, applying for that job. It keeps people from uh, me- making their deadlines. Um, or, and oh my gosh, this one, that burst of energy that it gets you across the finish line and and the person says, oh, well, you know, I'm really motivated when I have a deadline, so I'll get it done. And yet that's actually not how our brains work. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) So what actually happens is, yeah, you get it done, but it's probably got a lot of mistakes in it. So the Mm -hmm. procrastination and perfectionism, which can go hand in hand, can actually feed each other. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. So if any of those resonated, some, someone might be dealing with a, a, case of imposter syndrome. Mine was classic and mine was intense. Not everyone's is that classic or that intense. And yet if it goes without being dealt with, it can build, which was also what happened for me. Now, uh, speaking of intense, I saw uh, Sheryl Sandberg, who, you know, former, formerly with uh, Facebook and Google. Mm -hmm. Uh, She, she said that uh, both men and women are susceptible to imposter yeah. syndrome, but that women tend to experience it more intensely and be more limited by it. What's your perspective on true. that? Okay. No, this is true. It was first identified in women mm-hmm. and in the seventies where women were coming into the workforce. And, you know, I, I said it earlier in the conversation, imposter syndrome is really a diversity and inclusion issue. Because we, as a society, tend to feel like if I'm the only woman or only fill in the blank, any Mm -hmm. underrepresented demographic, okay, Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just use women because it was first discovered with women. Sure. Then, Then I feel like there's no one I can relate to. And therefore, I don't belong. So there's a sense of not belonging where we are, because when we look around in the landscape, we can't identify with anyone else. So that's one reason that women and other underrepresented demographics will feel that way. Mm -hmm. Another reason is that, especially for women, we feel like we might be betraying other responsibilities, So we might be betraying because that's still the way the society is structured. I have the responsibility for the home. I have the responsibility for the kids. I have the, you know, and then I'm not being, you know, true to that responsibility. And also what about my peers? I've now left them behind. Hmm. So, so all of those uh, internal struggles can really feed it, especially for women. Hmm. 
Okay, I don't want to leave men get men off the hook here. So, oh no, they're yeah, not let, off the hook. Okay, no, no. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let, let's 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 pull especially them back, ma- especially male entrepreneurs. Yeah, let's pull them in here. So, the, do- what is the issue with men? It, is it they do they not um, have imposter syndrome as much? Do they not talk about it as much? Uh, but they really do have it underneath the the surface. What's going on with men? Well, I, I, again, I, I think that especially when men achieve a certain level within an organization, that high achieving man, the man who goes out on his own and starts a business, mm-hmm. um, we have then put ourselves in a first only different situation. Mm. So all the same, you know, Feelings can apply. I've left my peers behind. I've, my peer group is back there. They're behind me, right? And what did I? Why am I so special? So I don't belong here. Um, I maybe maybe the the guy was a you know the the natural genius, right? And now suddenly I'm doing something that I have no context for, no experience for, and I don't know what to do. And I feel like somebody's going to find out. I don't know what I'm doing. Mm. All the same rules apply. I got it. So um, let's talk a little bit about the, I guess, how you uh, deal with it. (laughs) And do you need a third party? Do you need, you you mentioned uh, getting therapy. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you need a third party, a live person to be able to help, uh, maybe a trusted advisor, a coach, um, someone like that. Uh, and if so, how do you find that person? Because you're at a moment of obviously doubt. Uh, um, how do you find a trusted person that you can walk that journey with? Well, I, I happen to believe at, as a coach, I happen to believe that no one quote unquote needs a coach. Now all the coaches are going to cringe when I say this. I don't believe anyone needs a coach. I believe that coaches accelerate what we're ready to lean into. Mm. They give perspective, accountability, and you know all of those kinds of things that it's it just takes longer and it mm-hmm. can be harder to do on our own. Right. So can someone get over imposter syndrome on their own? Yes. Mm. Of course they can. They can pick up the books. They can, they can do the blogs, they can, you know, get all the information, putting it into application is so much faster and easier when you do it with somebody who understands. So that is possible with a uh, mastermind support group. It's possible with a coach like myself. Mm -hmm. It's possible with uh, a mentor. It's possible with a therapist. I mean, there's a, there's a number of outlets that you can, you know, work through. I think for CEOs, especially women CEOs who especially deal with this, you know, working with a coach who's been there, done that, got the t-shirt is a great way to accelerate getting through that because it does slow you down, Mm -hmm. limit your growth and limit what kind of um, income you can generate. Yeah, I want to get to that now because you mentioned mm-hmm. this is the price and value journey, and I'm I'm all about pricing. <laughs> and so, <laughs> you, and you brought that up earlier, so I want to get to yes. I want to get to income and pricing here in, in just a second. Um, but it, do you you mentioned the term "get over it," getting over it? Mm-hmm. Do you yeah. ever? and I don't know what the term is, do you ever really get over it? Or is it like, uh, maybe it's a bad analogy that you're once an alcoholic, you're always an alcoholic. It's just a matter of, um, controlling it, right. And dealing with it mentally, the the mental aspect of it, right. And doing what you've got to do, whether you're in AA or whatever to walk that journey. Um, as an alcoholic, are you always <laughs> suffering from imposter syndrome? It's just a matter of controlling it. Well, it's it's interest that that's an interesting choice of analogy, but, um, because maybe it's a bad analogy, Stacey. No, but the, I don't know that. Actually, I don't know that it is. Okay. Um, because um, there is um, actually, I'm I'm gonna 
pause for a moment. I'm going to say something. I really want your listeners to lean in and hear this. Mm. If you're dealing with imposter syndrome, it's not your fault. Because a lot of people will take that on and say, there's something wrong with me. What's going on? Mm. It's not your fault. You're a product of the society and the society's beliefs and values. You can change yours, right? So, yeah. so choosing to change is the important thing. And the reason I said that that's not such a bad analogy with uh, someone who's dealing with addiction, whether it's alcoholism, drug addiction, or any other kind of addiction, is uh, the 12-step programs say, look, the solution is actually to understand, have a self-awareness, a consciousness of who you are in the context of the greater whole mm -hmm. and, and change how you're seeing yourself so that you don't feel empty inside, mm. that you don't feel like you're lacking something inside. And they say it's of a spiritual nature. Well, I believe spirituality is based on values and purpose and meaning. And a lot of people who are dealing with imposter syndrome have kind of disconnected from their internal guidance system, which is values-based, purpose-based, meaning-based. And we're really measuring ourselves by these externals. We're comp constantly comparing ourselves to everyone else mm -hmm. and looking for affirmation that we're, we're okay. They're not going to, you know, they're not going to kick us out of the club today <laughs> um, be because they didn't find out that we don't really belong here. Right. Um, so, so, so instead we can turn into our own uh, inner guidance system that says, no, I'm, I'm perfect, whole and complete exactly the way I am. And I can do this. And if I need help, that's not an admission of weakness. That's an admission of uh, willingness to grow and learn. So I want to give you a chance to, I mean, we talked extensively about your, about your bathroom floor experience. I want to give you a chance <laughs> to talk about the other side of that. And yeah. just as you've been able to recognize and then um, put that experience in, in the box it belongs mm -hmm. in your life. Uh, mm -hmm. What has been the result for you and your, your business and your life? Oh my gosh. Well, I will tell you, um, I stopped, I stopped, I stopped racing. I, I love that question. Um, I, I stopped racing against myself. It felt like I was competing with people, competitors, the industry, you know, other CEOs. I was trying to be better, stronger, faster, you know, all of that. Um, I was doing it at the expense of my poor body that was just trying to serve me, you know. Mm -hmm. And and uh, and by the way, I, I do want you to know that I am 100% healed mm -hmm. uh, physically from that. Mm -hmm. Um so I feel um, more energetic. I feel more engaged, but mostly I feel more fulfilled. Um, you know, the money is great. You know, I mean, here we are price value, you know, the, the money is great. It doesn't, it doesn't fill the gap of self-doubt that, that is created by imposter syndrome. It never is enough because it's always external. So what what happened is I got a lot more satisfaction and I'm like, well, hey, this is this is doing something that is really of service. I really love and I get paid good money for doing it. What more do you want? Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Great words here from uh and and a great story here from Stacy Ruth. She's the CEO of Unstoppable Leader. So, uh, let's talk about pricing. Let's talk, <laughs> let's talk right, about, let's how, yeah, let's get there. So how did, for you, how did in, imposter syndrome affect your pricing? How did you get to a point where you, again, you put, put that in your box, in the box and, and kept it from affecting how you communicate and talk about your value? Yeah. Well, it, it's interesting. I'm, I'm actually going to use it uh, because uh, let me collect my thoughts on this one <laughs> because um, imposter syndrome 
can continue to pop up even after you've done the work. You recognize it when it does. And one of the places that it popped up for me recently uh, in, you know, like the last three years when I really leaned into doing the um, executive coaching, which I had people asking me to coach them. So I said, well, there's a need for this. I, I'd be happy to, to step in and, and, and do this. And I love it. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love it. And that little imposter syndrome, you know, sitting on my shoulder, whispered in my ear, who do you think you are? This is classic imposter syndrome. Who mm-hmm. do you think you are to coach CEOs and executives who are more successful financially, you know, hierarchy, all of that, than you are? Mm. And and so I'm I'm walking through this because the answer to that is I don't need to be more powerful, more successful in order to be able to serve. What I'm able to do is help them bring out their own inner wisdom, right? That's what coaches do. We ask powerful questions and we help people discover their own truth and their own value and their own worth, right? Mm-hmm. So so I don't have to board it over them. Right. I'm not even supposed to. That's not my job. And and so I know what my value is. And so I could, you know, <laughs> I could set that that imposter syndrome off my shoulder and and say, no, no, not today. We're not going to do that because that that's not even the truth of the experience. If that makes sense. I'm not sure if I answered your question, but I, I felt like that was an important shift for people to be able to hear that I can charge what an executive coach charges because I'm being an executive coach. I'm not being the executive. Right. Right. And what I think what I hear you saying is that you really switched in your head from thinking about making this comparison of uh, externals, you know, external position, power, authority, whatever to the outcome that you'll help foster in the person that you're going to be working with. Correct. And that's where the value is, right? That's where the value is. Mm -hmm. And I've been in other industries. I've been in marketing, you know, and a lot of folks are starting all different kinds of, you know, marketing and sales type organizations right now, just as rife with imposter syndrome and and uh, pricing is all over the highway. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lot of startup businesses are nickeling and diming on things that really have more value. And, uh, you know, you can get something on Fiverr for $5. Why would I pay someone, you know, $1,200, $2,000 for the same thing I could get for $5 on Fiverr, right? And so that leads to a lot of imposter syndrome. Why should I charge $2,000 for this? Sure. Right. Well, because you are providing the service, you're making sure it's tailored and customized, you're, you know, whatever, whatever's going on there that mm-hmm. makes it a higher value, own it. Well, it's, it, it's, it, people are making the wrong comparison, right? I mean, they're, they're comparing, right. they're looking at the competitors instead of looking at the outcome they bring about. And they right. may have done this, like you're saying, you may have done this many times before, mm-hmm. but that doubt and that, um, oh, they won't pay that, <laughs> that right. voice that comes in your head, uh, it still right. comes back. Right. I mean, right. and, and so do, do you treat it like a friend and just wave at it and say, okay, I see you and, <laughs> and they keep going. Is that what you do? That's what it yeah, sounds like. A little bit, yeah. a little bit. Um, and, and this, the steps I go through are, are awareness. Mm-hmm. Oh, I recognize that voice. I know what that voice is about. Mm. Okay. All right. Okay. We are having an imposter moment. Let's just have a moment. And then when that happens, okay, is that true? Questioning those thoughts is critical to shifting them. Is that true? If it's not true, or if I don't know that it's true, what's an alternative? And then pursuing the alternative 
and testing it, being willing to test that alternative. Yeah. And, uh, and that's really how the shift occurs. Individual variations, of course, but, but that's, that's the critical component is awareness and then questioning our thoughts about that. You know, I'm so glad you, we could do this show because, um, you know, I, I work with folks a lot on their pricing and what I recognize the, the base problem for so many of them really is imposter syndrome. Um, mm-hmm. it, and that's really the underlying problem. Um, I'm not the psychologist. I'm not the coach like you are. Um, I, but I'm not what, a psychologist. I just want to be clear. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Neuroscience. Yes. Psychologist. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, noted. Um, but what, what, I guess what, um, I would ask you to submit to you is, you know, I think it's dangerous for people to, um, think about this in terms of, oh, I need to get what I'm worth because that takes you down the internal uh, conundrum that you're going through and switch it toward outcomes I bring about. And if you do that, it really take it should help get you out of the whole business about thinking what it, that it's about you. It's not about you. It's about the outcomes you help foster with the work that you do. And I realize for some people that may be a subtle difference, but that's really the, the step folks need to take. That's what I would think. Now, what, t- t- give me your reaction to that. Well, it actually makes me think about something that a lot of new coaches are told is you're not selling coaching. Coaching's what you do. Mm-hmm. It's not who you are. Right. And so to be able to share the results that you create changes the entire conversation. So, so helping someone get out of overwhelm, helping someone be able to get clarity around what next steps are. That's what coaching does. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so when somebody says, what do you do? Uh, I don't, I don't say coaching. I say, I, I help executives and CEOs who are dealing with uh, exhaustion, overwhelm, a new position, a lot of change, and really help them get clarity and focus so they can grow their influence and impact. That's what has value. That's mm. what creates the the price value equation. There you moment. go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, results are the deal. Results are the deal. And allowing yourself to own the results and not feel like you're being um, – full of yourself. Ah, yeah. I like it. And, and to, to get the testimonials, to ask for the referrals, you know, all of those things, uh, imposters will hold back on as well. Mm. Great point. Uh, we could talk more about that, but, uh, <laughs> that's for sure. But that's a great way to end, uh, Stacy Ruth, uh, CEO of unstoppable leader. Wow. Stacy, I can't tell you how much I'm, uh, appreciate you coming on and sharing your story and uh, in such a uh, raw and real way. I really appreciate you. And I just want to go back because I bungled your books. Okay. What oh. I mentioned your books. So um, her, all the books, yeah, all the books. <laughs> that's what happens when you release multiple <laughs> books. Right. So Stacy's first book was own your own shift. And I, yes, be careful I, how you say that. Yes, mm-hmm. that's right. And I almost <laughs> bungled that too. But uh, her new book is called Inside Out Smart. So yes. be on the lookout for Inside Out Smart. Yeah, April nineteenth. Uh, yeah, it come, launches coming yes. here in April nineteenth, twenty twenty two, and own your own shift. Yeah, I got that right. Is out. Yes. <laughs> it's been out. You can get it right now. Um, Absolutely. So I wanted to clarify that for everyone. Thank you. Yeah, but Stacy. Uh, well, wow, again, thank you so much for coming on. Before we let you go, I would love it if you could, um, if you don't mind sharing your contact information so folks that are interested in hearing more about you and your work can be in touch. Absolutely. Um, I think one of the best places to reach me is through my website, unstoppable-leader.com. And you can find me all over social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Stacy Ruth says, and that's S-T-A-C-E-Y. 
So I look forward to connecting with your listeners. Thank you. Stay- great work here. Thank you, Stacy. I really appreciate you. And thanks again for coming on. Thank you very much. Folks, just a uh, quick reminder. If you're a newcomer to this series, you can find the full show archive at pricevaluejourney.com or, or on your favorite app. Just uh, use that search term, Price Value Journey. You'll find the show. And if you'd like to connect with me directly, uh, just send me an email, john at johnray.co. Thank you for joining us.